Today I will be building a model of a house. This is a scratch built model. Start with what you need to do really is get yourself some kind of plan. You don't have to do a technical drawing, the dimensions and everything like that. This is just the ground area which is 20 feet wide and 25 feet deep. The height of the building up to here is 17 feet. We've got all the bits of cardboard to cut out. We can start putting in the doors and windows. You can do your measurements on the cardboard. What you need to start with is pretty thick cardboard. Now this is O gauge but if you're using double O gauge you'll probably want single thickness cardboard but you'll probably find you'll want to brace the building internally with some more cardboard to stop it warping. Quite big. Um, I'm using double thickness cardboard. And I'm going to mark out the cardboard. So now we are ready to cut it all up. Make sure my plan's not underneath. <laughs> this is an extremely sharp razor knife. to cut this large bit off to make the video too long. Now don't forget your wall is 20 feet wide but the walls on the sides have a certain thickness and mine are almost a foot wide which is about right for walls I suppose. Anyway, we won't be seeing inside the building. And what I'm saying is these walls here are 18 feet wide now. Because obviously you need to allow for the thickness of the walls. And got that right here, that's right here. And there's your shell. If I can fetch my little fellow, give an idea. That's about the right size. That's uh, 17 feet tall. Measured my house. The room's eight feet tall almost eight feet. Doors are six and a half feet. Um, so the house itself with floor in the middle would be 17 feet tall. And now we're going to, uh, sorry mate, I just squashed him. Right, so now we're going to glue them all together. So glues. I use loads of different glues, all sorts of glues. You name it, I've got it. Polystyrene cement, no good for this job. And Bostic all-purpose clear glue and Loctite super glue. But for this job, I always find it's easier to use contact adhesive. And I've got this off the internet, off eBay, Unibond. And we need to put glue on these two sides here because they are going to go onto there, like that. See? So I'm going to get all this glued up now and come back to put it all together. Okay, so while we're waiting for the glue to dry, I've marked out a few dimensions on the plan. So a door is normally six and a half feet wide need to allow the door frame and for the lintel above the door same as the window and the window normally two and a half feet from ground level to the sill um, and then from the floor which is here oh beg your pardon floor which is here that's the floor, second floor. 
it's two and a half feet from here to here and then your window including the frame and then this uh, lintel as well above the window which goes to about there we're going to have to cut out and the little one above the door as well for the bathroom toilet whatever it's going to be a lot smaller than that because the frame has to go here and the window sill so it'll be about that big so uh, cut out this part here like this right, I've got all my parts ready that's the front cut out Sides are glued. So the next thing to do is to think about a covering for the building. And I'm going to use some brick embossed plastic card, but if you don't have any, then you'll have to buy some brick paper. Now this stuff I produce myself. You'll have to watch my other YouTube video for that, which I'm going to put up soon. How to produce your own brick paper. But I'm not using that. I'm using some of this brick embossed plastic card. I have a piece here, which uh, should do for there. If you're using brick paper, wait a minute. So I've got a piece of scrap paper here, and um, I'm going to show you now. using brick paper just glue the paper straight onto the model so just glue the paper straight onto the model like that and then when you've when you come back and it's dry you'll have to slice out an eye shape like that so that you can fold the brick paper around the corner like that okay because windows are recessed and you will be able to see the bricks going around the corner and what I'm going to have to do here don't want that scrap piece of paper anymore what I'm going to have to do here is the front door will be all right because it will have a, a door frame all the way around it flush with the bricks but the windows are going to have to have 
and don't throw this away if you're using brick embossed plastic card because if this was the window you would use it to go around the corner mm, see and that is what I'm going to have to do here when I do that okay Right, so when it comes to putting it on, be very careful because it's contact adhesive. And you really, really need to have the edge flush and the floor and the roof, so feel along. And then if everything goes all right, that side should be flush as well. I normally take some of this PVA wood glue and it dries into a sort of plastic right I'm going to leave that to dry now right so I now have the outbuilding fitted to the back same way cardboard measuring got the brick paper on here I have to do this in three bits because I didn't want to waste any material and uh, I'm going to going to hide these joins by putting a sort of a piece of wood along here and have a lean to but it's going to be an open frame lean to like a to grow a wisteria on or something like that like a summer area with paving guttering down here to hide that join comes along here this guttering and goes down here to some drains next to the patio right so the roof area here you need to calculate the hypotenuse of the right angled triangle here now then here's the roof here I'm going to come to the calculations in a minute um, when you cut all your cardboard to the right size with your calculations you're going to need to bevel these two edges here so they sit flat and then you'll get a nice flush line and this will be nice and flush there so bevel your edges down here as well and as you can see this one as well is also beveled all the way round and it fits in there nicely and snugly right now then the calculations now you need to work out how much material you need for the roof without wasting any or making mistakes or anything like that and decide how tall you want your roof which for me was the internal height was seven foot to the apex and from the apex to the guttering is unknown and you know you can use a ruler if you want but really you have no idea um, where the seven foot high is so unless you use two rulers you know it's going to be very difficult so take the half the width of the roof which is 10 foot in this case 10 tens are 100 and square the seven as well which is 49 so you need the square root of 149 now i'm old school and i like to do things the, the old way because when i was at school we never had calculators so 149, 12, 12 is 144 and the only number you can multiply by itself is 2. So 242 by 2 is 484 which leaves 16. So it's 12.2 and 244 
242 plus 2 is 244 divided by 2 is 122 which means that is right so it's 12.2 from here to here and obviously the same from here to here which is 7 foot and in this case it's 7 foot as well so uh, 7, 7 is 49, 49 and 49 is uh, 98 and the square root of 98 will give you the distance from there to there. And with that you can cut out your triangle, you can bevel the sides like I said and like that and then it will just fit in nice and easily. I'm going to glue that together now before it falls apart again. And then the next thing to do is to place the tiles along here, which is going to be old school again, made out of card. I'm going to get the tiles a little bit over the edge so that I can put some guttering all the way around. What I've been doing here is fitting some of that leftover brick embossed plastic card to the window apertures. And I'm having a little bit of a problem with a slight gap between the two pieces as you can see. So what I need to do to solve that problem is take some of this plastic straw here which you can buy from most hobby shops and stores and cut it to about the right size, you can trim it up later. So need to fill in the little gap. I'm going to need some polystyrene cement for this because it's plastic. And that will go all the way along there. And then that will just drop into that little hole or gap between the two pieces and later when it's dry it can be filed down with a warding file another one there I've done and uh, that will fill in the gap and of course when it's painted and everything you'll not see it at all that will sort out the problem. It will also sort out the problem for the uh, bricks on the corner of the house if you have any but there aren't any here. As I said I took a great deal of care to make sure that the, the corners fitted flush and so uh, there's not really any gap there at all. It will just need filing down On the corner there like that just in case one sheet is which is pasted on pasted on top of this one so this one this one was stuck down first and this one went on top making sure it's completely flush against to there and uh, just to take this sharp edge off where it overlaps just by the tiniest fraction of a millimetre that will remove that problem and that is now nice and flush just a little bit more there and like I say when you painted it all you'll certainly not notice it to do the roof now and I have marked out a piece of thin card very flexible very thin in one foot wide sections I can't have very well did I right first one done Let's finish off cutting all those and then I'll start at the bottom like that and then overlap them as I go up.
I've now completed covering the roof and the next job is to put the ridge tiles in place down all the corners along the top and for that I will need to cut some pieces of card which are two foot wide so they fold over the ridge and I've made four pencil marks two foot wide and the pen marks are for scoring with the back of a knife so I'm going to do all that now and first of all I'm going to score with the back of the knife so that it will fold over move the ruler over use the sharp side of the knife to cut it off If you want to go to the trouble of slicing these like that, making individual tiles, you can do, but you know, it's up to you. I'm just doing a, a tutorial video here and showing people how all this is possible. So you can do that if you want. I decided not to. It's your choice. You can build it wherever way you want. It's your model. You can do what you want with it. As long as you're happy. I might use this on the layout. But the thing to remember is if you're not happy with it, you can always build another one because this is only made out of cardboard and uh, brick paper if you want, whatever. And that is it, that is the roof completed. Just been building the guttering and the downpipe. And obviously drinking straw has been used and as you can see here this drinking straw is about seven or eight inches wide and that is just not going to be realistic. There's going to be people saying, ah, oh, that's too big, that's too big. So I've had to adopt a new technique. And you'll see now that this is actually four inches to scale. So that is the correct size guttering. Some houses have three inch guttering. I've decided I want mine four inch guttering and it's a lot smaller than that one. I've uh, 
used a little piece of PVA glue to fit it to the guttering. Now the first thing to do is to cut your downpipe to the correct size. Make it a little bit longer because you need to cut out a little U shape in here to sit that into. And also you're going to have to cut your guttering as well and as you can see that is about four inches wide. Now it does have a natural bend in it if I can get a hold of it. Yeah that's four inches wide so that's that done. First of all I'm going to show you on this old piece of drinking straw how to do that and make it the correct width. So first of all you cut using a ruler and you press down very hard on the ruler. Don't worry about this drinking straw not being able to go back to shape. It most certainly will and draw it through a couple of times and then you'll find if you do that and there's about four pieces in there to make a piece of guttering and there you will see just there that is the correct size is about four inches and as I said I've already got my guttering here ready to go on there I'm just going to cut that corner at an angle because I want to fit that against that one there first of all you need to get your pieces of wire now this nail is four inches wide, which is the scale. Now this is ouch, oh, this is a little bit difficult to wind the wire around initially, but once you've got started, so carry on. And then when you've wound it around on the nail. Snip that piece off. Don't snip this off, but just bend that down because that is going to be the piece that you're going to use to glue to the wall. Let's show you again. Now, this time we are not going to slice all the way through the drinking straw. We are simply going to slice the top. You will know as soon as it goes through. There we are, gone through that bit. Now then. Now the idea of that is that you can roll it in your fingers. And push that up and push 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 and again and make sure that these all go down the same way and the last one because I'm having three on here and then as you move these up through the downpipe, move that one up to the top and then you'll see that the join, you also have to try to get it to the back so it hides it out of the way. And also try to line these wool join us up as well and that is it that's your downpipe so now going back out
that's completed the guttering I've uh, done what I said here Down pipe over the join to wait now for this PVA glue to dry as I said before and I was going to show you wasn't I it just nice it's nice thick stuff so it just seals up any little cracks and crevices here and there and uh, good stuff to use. Let's have a little close up there and you'll see quite clearly if I can get it focused in that it's dried nicely and put a join there. It'll be alright when it's painted. See it's nice. I'm now in the process of making the windows and as you can see I've done a couple of fine examples here made out of balsa wood and clear plastic. The clear plastic is simply um, off the uh, roller blind protective packaging. You know the square plastic tube that roller blinds come in. And I've saved some of that and it's very useful for making glazing. And this is a mixture of balsa wood. This is hard balsa wood or basswood as it's called. And then the frame itself is just ordinary soft balsa wood which is much easier to handle. This window is a whole frame which is in the open position and this one has a quarter light in with plenty of detail. So let's go ahead and build this window frame. Now I use a pair of calipers like this. Or if you haven't got those you can use an ordinary ruler. I've got a six inch one here which is my favourite for modelling. And here I have a scale ruler, seven millimetres to the foot. A scale ruler is really the ideal tool for building scratch buildings. So here we need to measure the width, which is going to need to be one millimetre less than that, which is 33 and a half. So 33, say 33 by, don't forget you're going to put a lintel at the top as well so that's it oh blimey I've moved it now so say yeah to move my house over a little bit so we can see what we're doing I have been cutting all the parts to shape and um, I mean it's not really very difficult to work out and what you need to do is basically build a frame. Um, it's going to be as wide as the window, two pieces, and then two pieces a little bit shorter than the height from here to here. Um, and uh, also your quarter light, which will be across, that's going to be a little bit thinner than these two pieces here, if you see here. It's a little bit shorter, just a tad. And the lintel has been put in. That just slots in there like that, nice and easy. But the sill is a completely different thing altogether. Now the sill, you're going to have to cut a little bit wider than the window frame so that you have your, it looks like it's bedded into the bricks either side of the window. Uh, optical illusion and also if the camera will focus you're going to need to cut a piece out like that so that it sits over and down onto the sill like that so when you put the window in it looks like that so now then we're going to glue all these pieces on here now and I'm going to have to do this. It's going to make the video very long, but I can sort of move this around so you can see what I'm doing. I'm a little bit clumsy sometimes and get my fingers in the way. You've probably seen already in this video. A little bit of glue all the way around. I'll probably make a 
mess because I'm in a bit of a hurry. I don't want to make the video too long. It can be rather frustrating watching a long video that drags on. But, you know, I mean, the thing is, you can always zip to the parts you really need. A bit like watching a Bob Ross tutorial. You can always zip to the parts of the thing that you need to watch. Oh, give me a little so-and-so. Right, that goes on there, that goes on there. Oh, there we go. And that one goes on that side. There we go. And that one goes on that side. There we go. Oh. Is that broken? Come on, you little so and so. Right. That's it. Just have to. Anyway, this is just a basic thing imaging, just to give you an idea of what is going on. And that is it. A little bit of a gap there. Now we're going to put the quarter light in. And this time I'm not going to put any glue on the On the window itself because otherwise it's going to smear the window and damage the glazing so I'm going to put that about that far down just a rough guess doesn't have to be exact it's more sort of uh, by eye really than anything else and there we go that is the window finished Let's see there like that and the glazing initially glues onto the back of the window sill so you get a whole unit and it will just slot in place like that as I say You can take all the time in the world to build your model. But I'm in a bit of a hurry here because I have to make this video as short as I possibly can. I'm going to have to fill in the sides of this window as well with some small pieces of balsa because that's not, so that's got a little bit of a gap either side. So that's it. That is the window finished. I've trimmed it up around the sides there pushed a little bit of wood in there like that just wait for the glue to dry now and that is finished it looks like a quite a nice window there with the sill and uh, do the door next um, that is similar to the window so i've completed the door from the front door and uh, as you can see, a piece of cardboard with a piece of glazing glued on the back and all the little pieces of balsa wood cut to size and glued on the front. Uh, the door handle is a dressmaker's pin cut to size. You don't just push it through the other side, otherwise there's going to be some stabbing involved. Um, Cut it off myself just to be on the safe side and it's a nice panel door and it just fits in there a treat he says there we go that glue it in place finish off all the other windows and then we shall be painting so see you later okay so 
just finishing up painting now and obviously you can paint the bricks whatever shade of red you want new modern house bricks are sort of orange but older houses like this one are a darker brick red and uh, I'm just going to now show you how you can just add a little bit of highlight to the bricks by dropping in some very very thin grey paint I mean so thin it's like water and as you can see it is actually going between the brick courses and giving you a little bit of a mortar line here and there I don't want the house to look perfect because it is an old house so when I pan away you will see that uh, Nice. Do some bits down here. You don't have to do it all. It's a little bit like drawing a picture of a house. You can draw the square block of the house and put the windows in, but you don't have to fill the walls in with bricks. You just give a hint. There we are. Just here and there. And wherever we want. I don't know whether you've actually heard of a, an artist from the 60s called Robert Crumb. He was quite a controversial American satirist, artist. And he did some wonderful cartoons. And his houses, um, or his cartoons, contain buildings which have just a hint of bricks. So there's just a few bricks drawn in there and there and there. And that gives you the idea that it is a brick wall. Well, here I'm doing something similar to the embossed brick plastic card. And uh, need a bit more thinness there. Just a little bit too thick there. There we are. just want if there's any areas showing through white you can just drop some grey in there and go round now as you can see I put my beam in across here <clears throat> painted the windows white I've uh, stained some of the edges of the pipe here with grey as well to make it look older and worn and uh, just finish this off now and that will be the end of the video we will have a Good look at what I've done. Just a little bit of a hint there, there, a little bit under there, and it looks nice and old and dirty. But you can do it whichever way you want. It's your model. You can do what you want with it. 
You don't have to use brick embossed plastic card, as I said earlier in the video, you can use brick paper. But using brick paper, you won't be able to get the same effect of dropping in the colour on the bricks like this. So there we go. Ooh, just a little bit more there. That doesn't look right, does it? There we go. Perfect. There we go. Right, so. Right, so the roof I've painted black, but you can paint it light grey or whatever colour you want. I need to hold it up now. Forgive my fingers. And that is it. It's a nice old looking house. There we go. So you can do it whichever way you want. Okay. Hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.